Hello everybody, this is Luna Claire Astrology, formerly known as Astrology Crafts with Ildiko. I have signed myself up for a name change, uh, as I believe Luna Claire describes much more who I am. Uh, Luna Claire means moonlight in French and I was born under the full moon um, and that moon is very prominent in my chart. So hence the reason why. Thank you so much for joining me in this video with Luna Claire Astrology, where I'm going to discuss the June horoscopes and the June energies for all 12 signs. As usual, I'm going to go, I'm going to give you some explanation about the the energies, upcoming energies in June, and then I will break it down to all 12 signs. If you would like to book a reading with me, you will find my details down below. Um, please, otherwise, thank you so much for subscribing to my channel. Thank you so much for watching and supporting my channels so more and more people can benefit from these videos. So, Let's jump right into June astrology, you guys. I bet you are eagerly waiting already. What is the stars are promising you for the next month to come? So for the majority of the month, Sun is going to be in Gemini, which is a very lighthearted, very sociable energy. Um, very, uh, it's an air energy. That means uh, there's uh, lots of communication going on, lots of learning as well. Uh, as we know, this is uh, the examination time in schools as well. Now, Venus is in Taurus, and that's the best position for Venus to be. Uh, that means we are enjoying some sensual pleasures, such as food, eating, and drinking and going out maybe uh you know uh, something to do with arts uh arts and crafts maybe uh some drinks as well some social aspect as well mars is in aries and these are all planets that are in very good dignity so i believe although some planets are retrograde but we have Venus in a good in a good position, Taurus in a good position. Saturn is very strongly featured in uh, in the sky as well, very strong in Aquarius. Um, Mercury then will move uh, in around the mid months is going to move into Gemini as well, uh, going direct. So that's um, these are all planets that are enjoying a very strong position and so Mars for example in Aries it means that our action is in the right place you know we are acting out of instinct um, you know a little bit impulsively but in the meantime it means that our action is uh, very enthusiastic very instinctive but Mars in Aries we know how to act correctly of course, that's a general energy. I'm not talking about personal horoscopes. Well, not just yet. So the main aspects of June is definitely going to be Mercury turning direct, Saturn turning retrograde, and all that is happening on the same day. Also, we will have a full moon in Sagittarius and a new moon in Cancer. Now, the maturity of the personal planets, especially once Mercury turns and direct and moves back to Gemini, are going to be very strong. That means, you know, our personal energies of love and money, our actions, our communications now are featured very, very strongly. Some planets are, as I said, Saturn uh, turning retrograde. Uh, so that's going to give us some time to introspect into uh, all the Saturnian qualities in Aquarius. Uh, Pluto is already retrograde. Um, direct in Taurus, the 26 degrees. It's going to conjunct Argo, the most evil fixed star in the sky. So I highly recommend not to initiate any projects on that day uh, because it will carry that evil quality of the Argo fixed star. Um, it also activates the Scorpio lunar eclipse from last year November so, so that could be some resolution and clarification coming up 
with regards to that lunar eclipse. Saturn also is going to turn retrograde on that same day. So that's another reason not to initiate anything important on that day and even the previous other days after that. Uh, it is going to be the time to revisit your plans and projects, make sure that they have good and strong foundation, uh, a solid structure to them how effective you are, how can you go forward with your project, uh, how can you organize your time better, how can you overcome your hurdles, and you need to be more patient. Uh, some of you will be able to withdraw to themselves a little bit uh, and do some more introspection. Now, this time, the Saturn, the Saturn going retrograde, it usually lasts for five months. So um, this is the time where uh, when Saturn gives you the chance to kind of uh, revisit your plans to make sure that whatever you are planning, whatever you are restructuring, it has a solid, strong foundation and the result is going to be masterful. Now, the full moon in Sagittarius is going to be a little bit of icky one. Uh, that is a combination of a plan and project related to education, travel, communication, advertising, publishing, and beliefs. And the ruler of the new moon is connected to Mars and Chiron conjunction, which often talks about physical wound or body trauma. It's very accident prone. Uh, it can inflict or you can inflict in Q Curable physical wound on somebody, sometimes because of rage or anger, uh, because Mars and Chiron conjunction is extremely reactive and extremely impulsive. So you need to find a way how to constructively channel your anger on your own rage and take the chance to... Um, commit to work on your unprocessed pain so you can experience uh, the transformative the transformative power of a rage now at the end of the month there's going to be a new moon in cancer and that is going to be again a very funny one um so new moons are usually like newborn babies. It's a very new energy. It's, it's, it, it begins a new cycle of two weeks or perhaps six months till, uh, till the next, next full moon or till the next cancer full moon. And uh, we can usually we begin something new and we can plant seeds of intention to go to manifest something. Now, this new moon is squared by Jupiter, which gives um, overconfidence. It gives um, access in terms of food and alcohol, and it can give this loyalty and, and adds a darker aspect because of the conjunction, exact conjunction with Black Moon Lilith. Let me just talk uh, a little bit about Black Moon Lilith. She is a dog deity. Um, it's not a real planet or point. Uh, Lilith represents the furthest point between the Earth and the Moon's orbit, therefore symbolizing the most hidden and obscure feelings and, and part of our personality. It is associated with darkness. It's about the part of us that is rejected. Black Moon Lilith, as I said, she is a dog deity. She's the fallen angel, the demon, the temptress, the seductive, the darker, that embodies the darker aspect of sexuality, the taboo. Black Moon Lilith is the inner bitch. It also always very present with any dog experiences. She was According to the mythology, Adam's first wife, but she disobeyed him. Therefore, she was rejected and escorted out of paradise. Um, if it's very prominent in your horoscope, like let's say in on your ascendant or on your midheaven or with your sun or the moon, um, it means that you embody these traits in your personality. 
Now, to give you an example who has the um, Dark Moon Lilith, it's Marilyn Monroe. So as we know, Marilyn Monroe is, a, even today, the biggest sexual symbol, female sexual symbol, although there are many beautiful females out there um, as celebrities, I don't think anybody ever came close to the sexual power, to the seductiveness, uh, to the beauty uh, of the female sexuality as much as Marilyn Monroe did. But if you look into her life, she was really an unhappy person and um, also suffered an immature death. Um, and nobody even today knows exactly how this is connected to the Kennedys, how is this connected to, um, you know, to the darker part of her personality. The real challenge with this Cancer New Moon is that uh, the Cancer qualities are very subtle and very indirect. Uh, it could play out that uh, somebody in the family creates a poisonous domestic atmosphere. Um, the square from Jupiter also suggests there is excess energy of overindulgence, oversensitivity, and overconfidence regarding Black Moon Lilith. So your intentions that you are just about to set during that new moon in Cancer can really manifest into a big, fat, nasty, monstrous experience in the future. So what you need to be careful of, that these energies are present and you need to just really watch your intentions. Don't plant weeds of intention because then what you will reap with the full moon two weeks down the line or with the cancer moon six months down the line is going to be um, equally monstrous and equally nasty but in just a much higher scale i would love to hear where is uh, your black moon lilith uh, you can check it out um, with astro.com or you can also go and cast your chart with my chart calculator and uh, please comment down below what is your sign of Black Moon Lilith? Is it prominently placed in your chart? Is it the sun? Is it with the moon, ascendant or mid heaven? Now let's see all the 12 signs, sun, moon and rising. I usually suggest to watch these horoscopes for your rising sign, uh, but because that's what gives you the most precise manifestation but of course you can watch it for your sun sign as well as your moon sign this the sun sign energy will give you more about will feature more about the career aspect of your life whereas the moon sign is the more emotional more inward interpretation or more connected to your family and to your home life the more private area of your lives dear leo the sun is going to be in your 11th house in the majority of the months. So that means that you are going to focus so much on your friends this time, on your groups, on your communities, networks, and also on your gains from your career. You will become visible even more so. You are always very visible, dear Leo. Everybody notices you. But during these months, you are even more visible. You might be on demand, very popular, feeling very sociable and very lighthearted as well, because you know, sun in sun is your ruler planet, and that goes into Gemini. So you acquire this intellectual, uh, a little bit flighty, but also very sociable and very chatty, very entertaining type of person during that month and you are going to be just as I said very popular and being on the demand the sun in your 11th house is illuminating your ability to lead a group or perhaps even to create a community for some of you now you need to focus and you will be focusing also on your long-term goals in your gains from your career and also to build a social network. These are the important things for you for the next um, couple of weeks to come. Now, you could be somewhat unconventional because the 11th house, it takes really up some of the Uranian qualities. Uh, you could join some humanitarian causes and that 
gives you this feeling of pride. Uh, also, you know, you're very proud amongst your friends, groups, and communities following your goals and dreams. Now, Venus is in your 10th house, and this is an amazing position for Venus because she is at home in Taurus, which rules your 10th house of your career and work, social status, authority figures. So this really helps with your public reputation and you are able to show the best side for your bosses, authority figures or parents, therefore winning their approval. You may come across very charming, very agreeable. Venus is very, very strong in Taurus, as I said, very much supporting you this month financially as well. And you have lots of opportunities, very practical and tangible material opportunities at work or through your social status. Now, the picture is not so great in the relationship area. Or I wouldn't say not so great, but somewhat a little bit more sobering because Saturn turns retrograde on the 4th of June in your seventh house. And so Saturn has been there for quite some time now, but now uh, and try to restructure your seventh house of marriage and business partnerships as well. But now it is going to be the time when you need to even revisit uh, you know, the foundations and um, the restructuring of your marriage or the foundation of your business partnerships or clientele, some sort uh, of a business of some sort of clientele, if you have such. Now, relationship issues may arise with your spouse, with your clients, with your business partners. You need to reorganize your associations, your clientele, and renegotiate some terms of conditions. If you're talking about business, uh, if we are talking about the marriage, you need to rearrange the foundation of your partnerships. And this is like a test, really a testing time in your relationship, which it has been going on for a while. But when Saturn retrograde, it even more becomes a little bit burden, burdening and, and, and uh, sobering. There's like a reality check in your partnerships as well. And you need to see, you need to really now decide whether or not uh, you can sustain this relationship for the long term. Is it going to work for the next 28 years cycle to come? If it doesn't, if you are not emotionally so supportive toward each other, if the relationship, if the foundation somewhat lacks, then that might be the time when the relationship will dissipate or something will happen that uh, breaks off the relationship. If you have a strong emotional bond, if the relationship is uh, you know, flourishing, it's still going to be a relationship, a, a reality check. But um, once you relay the foundation, reflected on um, how well you embodied the Saturnian qualities, in your marriage, uh, it should uh, even strengthen up even more, uh, you know, after Saturn becomes um, direct again in your seventh house. So what are uh, Saturnian qualities? Saturnian qualities is reality, structure, a strong foundation, maturity, and of course, responsibility. So these are the qualities that you need to focus on in the next five months to come during the Saturn retrograde period. Now, on the 12th of the month, there's going to be a Venus-Uranus conjunction, and which is not far away from, from the north. So that could reactivate some of the nodal activities that is going on for you throughout the year. So that could be some material gains unexpected material gains coming up in your house of career, work, and social status. Uh, now, this could come very 
unexpectedly, very surprisingly, even for some of you, shockingly, because that is the planet that shocks you <laughs> out of the normalities, out of the expected, out of the conventional, out of the tradition. So expect the unexpected during that time. There could be some shocking revelation. It, for some of you, because Venus also rules your third house, for some of you, this could um, result a, a sudden business trip. Uh, you that takes you by surprise. Now you definitely have a taste for the unconventional, the unorthodox, uh, for something that goes beyond the normality, what considered normal in the you know, traditional society. Now, Mars is in your ninth house, and this makes you very active and very bold and adventurous. And it's, it's, it just met Jupiter, the planet of expansion and still within orb, at least in the beginning of the month. So that really gives you this hunger and this courage to go for an adventure and to expand your horizon, to travel, to study as well. There could be some legal fights for you, which can work out in your favor for sure. Very few of you might, you might have a bold opportunity to start a family abroad because obviously, Mars also rules your first house, or perhaps buy a property abroad, or perhaps live abroad now. You are very interested and active in higher education, philosophy, or travel throughout this time. Now, on the 14th, um, there's going to be a full moon, which is going to take place in your fifth house. And that is, again, somewhat connected to travels abroad, higher education, uh, but because it's happening in your fifth house, uh, it could be that you are releasing a child due to a trip abroad, or you might, uh, you know, your child might move out uh, due to college or university. So there's definitely going to be a culmination and a revelation. And as such, as a result of that, it could be that you need to release a creative project, or a fun project, or maybe a love affair will culminate, will end uh, during this time. Uh, and again, as I said, it is going to be connected to, you know, to education, travel, and uh, foreign lands or foreign people. Now, this full moon also carries the energies of the Mars and um, Chiron conjunction, and that is somewhat troublesome. <laughs> there could be some physical wound or trauma. We know that Chiron is the wounded healer in Greek mythology. So, and Mars is a very physical planet. And also this all takes place in Aries, which is, which is again, talks about the physicality, um, you know, the body. So because of that, there could be accident prone. And especially if you are traveling, uh, I would like to draw your attention on, you know, being just extra careful. Please make sure that you are definitely, 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 if you are traveling, take that insurance because that's the time when you might need it. Now, as I said, you're very active and um, and this is also rules, Mars also rules your fourth house of family. So you have this strong hunger and strong desire to travel, to learn, you know, to expand your horizon abroad, especially. Um, but Mars and Chiron in Aries is very impulsive and very reactive. So just make sure how you react to certain situations during your adventurous time, you know, during, uh, um, you know, associations with teachers, professors, during uh, learning time, during traveling time, or if you are publishing something as well, because there could be some clashes with teachers, with foreign people, um, as I said, is a very accident prone time during this transit. Uh, so just be careful because there's a highly high possibility to inflict pain on someone, uh, someone who is connected to your family or 
they may inflict pain on you. So the Mars and Chiron conjunction represents a great chance to commit to work long-term on your unprocessed pain and experienced firsthand the power of rage. Now on the 29th, there's going to be a new moon in Cancer. And we know the new moon is the time of birthing something new in that house area where this is happening to you. Uh, so these are new beginnings, great new beginnings. Uh, in, this is the time for intention setting as well. And so this is happening in your 12th house. Now 12th house again is connected to foreign lands, uh, but also connected to spirituality or activities behind the scenes, uh, also connected to hospitals, uh, something that is connected to isolation of some sort, uh, or even just because you have traveled or because you have to heal, you are in a hospital, or you just, uh, you know, you are busy, you are, you know, beginning something uh, 12th housey, a spiritual trip, a spiritual retreat, uh, um, some resting, recuperating, uh, a spiritual project, or something like that of some sort. So you need to watch out though, because uh, the new moon is with Lilith. I talked about that in the beginning of my video. So you need to just, uh, and it also receives a square from the Mars Jupiter conjunction, especially the Jupiter. So that suggests uh, some overindulgence, some overdoing something. Um, that is dark, seductive. The 12th house is also the house of secrets. So some sort of secret activities may begin, uh, which could be connected to sexuality or a hidden affair, but you could be nurturing something or somebody or even an idea that later on becomes dark and poisonous later down the line. Now, what you just need to be careful that you have all the best intentions, you're not engaging on anything poisonous because that has, that will have the energy to grow, to bloom into a full manifestation of, you know, a dark experience. So but with that all said, I hope that you can choose you know, a good project to begin uh, with, with regards to your 12th house. Um, I wish you all the best and I shall see you in my next video. Thank you. Bye-bye. Hey, don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it and press the subscribe button for even more videos on astrology.